Yo, it's Friday, so you know what that means. It's time for another edition of This Week in the XFL. And as always, I'm your host, Ooh, the referee. So let's get started. We have some big news this week, but before we do that, you'll prob you probably noticed that I maybe was not on top of all of my posts this week. Uh, there were some news items that came out that I didn't address right away. Uh, that's because I got married. The ball and chain has been successfully attached to my ankle. So that being said, like I mentioned, there's big flipping news. We finally got a couple things out of the way. We know who the broadcast partners are going to be. We found out the head coach of the XFL Los Angeles franchise. That means seven down, one to go. Save the best for last. Come on, XFL Houston, sign me up. You know, during that press conference, uh, you know, we had Jeffrey Pollock come out and he also mentioned going to be hearing another president announcement next week. Uh, will it be Houston? Will it be another double press conference? Only time will tell. But let's get to the man of the hour. The guy filling the role for XFL Los Angeles. My man, Winston Moss. Now, I'll say I did get a few tips saying that Winston Moss was going to be the guy. I didn't act on them and maybe I should have. Uh, I try to just make sure that I'm giving out the best information. Uh, but hey, Kudos to everybody who sent that in. Sign everyone up. Now, I will admit, uh, I wasn't so sure about Winston Moss, but after seeing that press conference, he's a perfect fit. I love it. Instant rivalry with my man, Coach Hayes, out in St. Louis. Calling him out in the press conference. That was the moment I knew. You know, just his look with the sunglasses. Everything was top-notch. I really liked it. Uh, it was a little funny too because they did the uh, they did the press conference outside in a pavilion, I believe, in downtown Los Angeles, and there was a lot of sirens and uh, during the the point where Oliver Luck was speaking. But uh, overall, I, I think it was probably one of my favorite press conferences, just for uh, just for like I said, it was fun. Uh, it was short, sweet, to the point, and he, like I said, instant rivalry. And uh, you don't really get that too much nowadays in other uh, sports organizations, if you will, right? Uh, but I do want to go over some of the highlights uh, because just in case you don't know who Winston Moss is, uh, you know, this, this might help you out. So he was a four-year letterman at the University of Miami where he won the 1983 championship with the Hurricanes, right? He was a linebacker for 11 seasons, played in 155 games, recording 768 tackles and 20 and a half sacks for the Seahawks, Raiders, and Buccaneers. Uh, he started his over two decade coaching career in 1997 when he retired from playing, spent 13 years with the Packers, and again, winning a Super Bowl as one of the Packers coaches. So sign him up. I think this is, like I said, a top-notch top -notch pick. Probably not a name that many people were expecting. Um, but like I said, that's not necessarily a bad thing. That, that to me is a good thing. Uh, and like I said, he's got the perfect attitude for LA. It kind of has that Raiders-esque feeling and it makes sense. He is a former Raiders player. So, you know, hey, sign him up. And before we move on to the next point, I say, I have to say, Heather Brooks Carrots is probably the best president that we have of any of the franchises. You should probably be following her on Twitter. She, uh, I'll put a link down in the description. She's very active, a lot of good pictures. You get a good behind the scenes look there. And you know, just even during this press conference, she was holding her own, she, she made it feel right. And I think she's gonna be awesome for the, that franchise there in LA. Um, so, you know, we have four of the presidents announced, four left. So come on, Houston, let's roll the dice and get us a good one because I want some fan engagement and some good stuff going on. Um, so, you know, let's move over to the other big story of the week, if you will. The XFL TV deals. Finally, finally, we've been wondering. And you know what? The speculation was true. So the XFL has signed deals with ABC, ESPN, Fox and Fox Sports 1. So ABC and Fox are the two broadcast ne uh, networks and then ESPN and Fox Sports 1 will be your cable providers. 
Uh, the streaming will all be handled through the the broadcast partners themselves. So it seems like at least for year one, probably year two, uh, we're not going to see any type of streaming service directly from the XFL. But games will be able to be streamed and easily, right? So none of this garbage that we had to deal with with the Alliance. If you have, you know, a smart TV or a laptop or a tablet, really all you should need to do is log in with your cable credentials and get signed up all day and night. So, you know, it's interesting. There's a, there's a few differences, again, when you look at the Alliance versus what the XFL is doing as far as timing, right? So the schedule will feature back-to-back -back games starting Saturday afternoons at 2 p.m. Eastern and then two additional games on Sunday afternoons. Uh, the, the playoffs will take place on April 18th at 3 p.m. Eastern on Fox Network TV uh, and Sunday, April 19th on ESPN, 3 p.m. Eastern. And the championship game is going to be on ESPN April 26th, 3 p.m. Eastern. And really, I'm hoping it's here in Houston. And if it's not, you know I'm going to try to be there. So Vince McMahon had this to say. He says, we're thrilled to partner with ESPN and Fox Sports 2 innovative media companies with extensive experience in world-class football production that will undoubtedly help us reimagine football. So the XFL broadcast schedule provides us with incredible reach and makes it easy for fans to watch our games consistently every weekend. And I think that's a big point, right? I think the Alliance actually did very well in the ratings for as, how, for as hard as it was to find their broadcast, right? You add the name recognition of the XFL, you add the, add the name recognition of some of the coaches and I'm sure some of the players that we're gonna find out here. And then you, you put right on top that cherry of having broadcast television and easy to find cable access uh, for your games. And I think there, there's, without a shadow of a doubt, the XFL is gonna blow those numbers out of the water. And, you know, we were looking at half a million viewers average, I think, at least once the dip came uh, for the AAF. And I, my benchmark's two millions per game. We will see, I, and I could be way off base, but that's that's where I'm thinking, that's what I'm thinking we might see with this type of broadcast partner, with these type of deals. Now, once again, these are multi-year deals. Um, and so we'll get into a little bit how it works, but before we do that, let's kind of do a quick breakdown of how, what games are gonna air on which channels and you know do all that. So we have 13 games on ABC, 11 games on Fox, nine games on Fox Sports 1, seven games on ESPN, two games on ESPN 2, which is good because some people don't have ESPN 2, so at least they're limiting the amount of games there, and then one game on Fox Sports 2. So the ones that may be difficult to find, we're looking at three games total, neither of which are the playoffs, none of which is the championship game. Um, so, you know, and I would assume that may be, uh, I, I don't have the schedule in front of me, but I know they're testing a Thursday night game somewhere in, later in the season. So very similar to the AAF, but different is kind of how the rights fees are working uh, with the XFL. So on the similar side, Sports Illustrated is reporting that there's no rights fees paid by ESPN or Fox to the XFL. So they're not making money from the TV deals. But while they're not paying a rights fee, the networks are picking up production costs, which estimate around 400,000, half a million dollars per game. So about 17 million throughout the season. Now that's one thing that the AAF did not have, which is going to be huge for the XFL, right? And again, this is just the beginning. Now, when you look at the AAF, they were on hard to find networks. They had one game, two games, I guess, on CBS, but it was really one game depending on where you were in the country. And the rest of them were scattered around and it just made it more difficult to find. These games are gonna be easy to find. And depending on those ratings, if they do pick up, and again, I, I'm saying benchmark of 2 million and they rise going into, into season two, once we sign that new contract, all of this could change, rights fees on the table. But realistically to me, it sounds like we're getting $400,000 per game, right? If they're paying for the production costs, we're not paying for it. So that's awesome. So again, just another little recap. We have two dozen 
XFL games that'll be telecast on over-the-air free TV, uh, allowing exposure in households without cable TV, right? So that's, again, a big deal, something that the Alliance had once or maybe twice, you know? Uh, the league will have more games on broadcast TV than the original XFL did in 20, uh, 2001. So we have 24 this time, 23. Slight edge, but hey, step in the right direction. Uh, you know, they're going to have consistent time slots, and that's a big deal too, because every week people are going to know when the XFL starts, and they're not doing this late night game stuff, at least for the first couple seasons, because they know people might be out doing something that night. Let's go out to the game, and I think that's a big focus. I don't know if they necessarily want everybody to just watch the games on TV, um, you know, clearly if you're out of market, they want everybody to be able to access it. But if you're in the market, shoot, I'd rather go to a baseball game at one in the afternoon than I would at 7.30 at night. And that's just my opinion. Maybe I'm getting a little too old for my britches, but that's just how I look at it, right? So we briefly touched on the Thursday night game. So... Uh, week 9 and Week 10, the XFL is going to test Thursday nights. That is when we're going to have a late game, 8 p.m. Eastern, and it's going to be on Fox. So, again, that's huge. Again, that, that's primetime TV on a Thursday night on a free over-the-air broadcast network. Big deal. That is huge. That's uh, Honestly, I look at that. That's better than the XFL being on NBC on Saturday night's prime time in the first iteration, right? So overall, I think this is huge news. This is great for the XFL. If there's anybody who thinks otherwise, I don't know what you're thinking. I don't know what you're smoking because to me, you know, you as a startup sports organization or any startup in general, this is this is like being handed a, a TV deal on a golden platter, right? Broadcast television, easy to find cable networks, consistent schedule, names that people know, easy way to stream the games, a good mix across all the networks. To me, it is a win. But if you have any thoughts or any comments, make sure you drop a comment down below. And hey, if you want to keep the conversation going, click the link in the down, down in the description for our Discord. A lot of like-minded XFL fans having fun every day. So, ooh, sign you up. You know, ever since the XFL was announced, there's been a lot of talk about how they would look at different types of criminal activity, right? So when it was originally announced, they said that they really didn't want any criminals in the league, and it was more about no politics, just football. And we've since seen them kind of walk that statement back to a certain extent. They don't want true criminals in there. But if you've been acquitted or maybe nothing really came of the crime or maybe you've proven that you've uh, kind of rebuilt yourself and you're trying to reimagine yourself as a player, they might give you a chance. You know, a good example is maybe a Johnny Manziel coming, com coming to the XFL. A lot of folks said... You know, he has a criminal record, this and that, blah, blah, blah. He's one of those dudes, though. I think if he shows that he's on the right path, on the straight and narrow, he could absolutely end up in the XFL. So that kind of leads us to the, our next topic, uh, which really focuses on drug testing in the XFL. Now, Oliver Luck said he would prefer not to test for marijuana. Now, what does that mean? Uh, are they going to not have drug testing? Uh, well, I don't think that's the case, right? I think they're absolutely going to test for PEDs, steroids, things of that nature, right? Uh, but I think when they're looking at things like marijuana, and, I, and I'm sure this depends on the state and the laws and where they're working out of, uh, but I, it looks like they might be taking a little bit of a relaxed approach. And I'm sure people like Josh Gordon um, may appreciate that, right? And it may, that may be something that draws players to the league. Now, I think there's probably going to be a limit. They're not going to want their players openly smoking marijuana, you know, out on the streets or 
God forbid, with fans and photos or things like that, or really even talk about it. But I think they're looking at it as what they do in their own home, as long as it doesn't affect anybody else, is fine with the league. And again, as a starter league, I think you almost want to take that approach just to maximize the availability of players that you can bring to your league, right? You look at the NFL uh, and you look at their drug testing and it seems like sometimes the little things matter more than the larger things, right? So when you do see a guy get suspended for marijuana, and I believe this has happened where they were suspended longer than when somebody had beaten their significant other. Uh, don't quote me on that, but there are situations like that that do happen in these bigger leagues. Now, if the XFL does take this approach, it, it's really eliminating that because now you're looking at, uh, I don't want to say real crimes because it is a real crime, again, depending on what state you're in, but more serious crimes, right? So, uh, you know, hurting someone, uh, maybe verbally abusing somebody, uh, theft, you know, things like that. I think the XFL is definitely going to frown upon uh, but it definitely, but it sounds like they're not going to be testing for marijuana, or at least that they would prefer not to. Um, and like I said, I, I'm sure this is going to bring in a situation where this depends on which state you're in, what cities you're in even, and what the laws are uh, within each of those. And that'll help really determine what, what the final outcome uh, will be on that. But hey, good news. It's always nice to differentiate yourself from the competitor. Like I said, to me, it seems like a good opportunity to maximize the amount of players that you have available for your league. Um, probably do want to keep doing, like I said, the PED steroid testing, probably maybe for some of the stronger drugs. Uh, but again, I would assume it's probably pretty easy to see if you have like a heroin uh, addict as a football player. But I don't know. I don't know. So we're going to cap this one off with uh, one of the fan favorites or, you know, one of the people that you hate the most, depending on who you are and your point of view. Uh, but it's always a big name, so I figured I'll touch on it. No real big news, but it sounds like the XFL has reportedly reached out to Tim Tebow. So Oliver Luck met with Dan Green of Sports Illustrated, and he touched on the topic of Tim Tebow. Uh, pretty much, Luck ran into Tebow at Clemson, Alabama National Game in January. He says he informally gauged the 31-year-old's interest in getting under center again. Uh, but Tebow, at least at the time, reaffirmed his commitment to baseball. Uh, now, that being said, it seems like he's having a little bit of a tough time in, in minor league right now. But I, I don't know if he's ready to take that step. Only time will tell. Uh, but you know what? I'm going to cap it off with a little bit of Tebow news there. But uh, overall, great news week. Sorry I missed out on posting, but I'm happily married, and it's a good time. Before I let you go, if you didn't know, we're also on Facebook and Twitter. Drop us a follow at XFL2K.com. No dot. Still trying to get that premium name. And hey, make sure you drop a like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell to see when we're dropping new videos. Some are going to be live and some are going to be pre-recorded just like this one. So until next time, ooh, sign you up. It's alright